Oklahoma Bridges here and today I'm working on a TIAC model A4000S and not just any 4000S this was my very first reel-to-reel -reel tape deck I bought at a garage sale in the neighborhood in Tulsa where I grew up sometime I want to say around 1994 1995 and in remembering I don't think I paid anything for it I think they gave it to me just to get rid of it um, and it's just as you see right here it's just the transport there's no preamplifier or anything which not having any pre-recorded tape at the time you know you could still go to Radio Shack and buy reel-to-reel -reel tape that did cause some issues it wasn't until a few later a few years later where I got an Akai machine with some pre-recorded tapes that I was able to actually play with a reel-to-reel -reel recorder and listen to music and by then the this machine had stopped working again and um, those issues have been remedied but here in recent times I've decided to do some work on the machine and here is a look at the inside of the machine I've been doing some work recapping it uh, I've replaced all of the old what are known as Suzuki bombs uh, let me show you a couple of them replaced all these Suzuki bomb caps these are 0.1 microfarad capacitors uh, I think there was a total of about 11 of these in this unit I replaced. Uh, the large yellow cap that you see right here uh, replaces this capacitor right here that um, goes across the fast relay. And let me just uh, spin this thing around so you can see the other side of the transport. When I originally got this thing back in the 90s, the drive belt was, of course, broken, gone. I replaced it with a rubber band and played with it a little bit with that um, blank tape I bought at Radio Shack and then by the time I got some pre-recorded tapes the rubber band had broken and uh, I didn't bother taking this back apart to replace it again or anything. Um, so it went in the closet and there it sat until a few years ago and I kinda got back in the tape decks again. Uh, but this is the front of the transport and um, you can see the capacitors that I have installed. One up here, There's one down here, and then these are where the transport buttons are at, back in here. And there's quite a few capacitors there including that yellow, actually there's only four. There's three and then that yellow one. And then there was one more of these Suzuki bombs on the power supply board. And I got rid of that there. I'm sure there's other capacitors I could probably replace on this deck, but I'm at this point not going to because everything else seems to work. But I did run into an issue though as I got near the end after I got all the caps replaced. I was testing this deck out before putting it back in the cabinet and auto reverse decided to stop working. And I don't know if you can see it very not well. Let me zoom in. There is a relay that goes right here that is missing. And we'll take a look at that relay. What you're now looking at is the reversing relay for the capstan motor. This is the relay that reverses the auxiliary winding on the capstan motor so that it reverses. What was happening was when you would put the deck in reverse play the real motors would would switch where the tension would change from the left one and the right one and the switching would happen in the audio circuits to go from the forward play head to the reverse play head but the capstan motor was not reversing it was continuing to operate in the forward direction and traced it to this relay the coil is open and I just so happen to have another old TIAC 
tape deck, but it's a A4000 without the S on the end. Decided to part it out rather than restore it because mice had gotten in and chewed up way too much of the wiring to make it really repairable without a lot of rewiring and frustration. And so I was going to harvest these relays off of, this is the reversing board. And these are, one of these relays reverses the real motors, the other relay reverses the capstan motor, and then this is the signal relay to reverse the um, electronics for the playback. And then these capacitors are um, 0.1 microfarad capacitors that bypass all the switch contacts to prevent sparking. It's interesting, they used these damn things and these, and these don't fail, but these do. In fact, this one's oily. Um, but these, uh, these relays, the coils are 80 volts, despite everything being the same on the electronics and the voltage supplied to these is the same between the two decks. These are 80 volts, not 100 volts. This relay is 100 volts, and I did not want to use one of these 80 volt relays. Um, so what I ended up doing was doing a little bit of searching on the internet, and I could not find this relay as a replacement. I could not find a replacement for this relay, but I did find this relay and I was able to find that relay from um, this guy on eBay uh, had this relay for sale and in looking at this relay and the way it's built and looking at this relay and the way it's built I said, huh, and that's why I bought this relay. This relay can be taken apart. I can unsolder the leads going to the coil, take out these two screws and unhook this spring, and pull the armature out and leave the armature in place and remove the coil and the frame and take the coil and frame off of this relay and mount on this relay and then solder the... Um, the coil on. As you can see there's a little bit of a difference here in the footprint of these relays. This relay has 11 terminals. This relay has 10 terminals and a flying lead that goes to the uh, coil. Apparently this relay is used in tube type uh, CB radios. So what I'm going to do is do a little bit of part swapping here and take the open coil out of this relay and put the good coil on this relay in and make a good working unit. So that's what I'm going to do now. Okay, the soldering iron is heating up. What I'm going to do is start disassembling this and... Um, I'll be unsoldering these um, connections here for the coil. I want to make sure all these screws are going to come loose for me okay. That one does. That one did. And unhook the um, spring. And I'll probably reuse that. And this is the armature. I'm going to set it off to the side. And I can go ahead and just snip these off. Okay, and these are the parts that will be reused, and this is the old um, coil. I 
All right. Similar, similarly, on this part, I'm going to remove these two screws here and disconnect the spring and unsolder the um, coil from there. I want to make sure these screws break loose okay. I've got a little bit of white um, locking paint on it there. That one. That one's unscrewed just fine. And so did that one. And now it's just a matter of waiting for the soldering iron to heat up so I can unsolder the one lead on the coil on this one and get rid of the old coil leads on this one. So we'll be back in a moment. I ended up not filming it because the camera was really in the way and it was kind of hard to work around it, but here is the completed relay with the new coil. Here's the old coil. Um, I accidentally broke one of these terminals off, so I went ahead and left this lead long, and I went ahead and left this lead a little long where it sticks up where the terminal's at. I think that's going to be okay. We'll find out when I solder this back into the circuit board. But it took a little bit to get all the adjustments on this set up correctly. And let me zoom in a little so you can see what I had to do. So the main adjustment that I was concerned about was making sure that there was adequate over travel at either end of the um, relay operation and especially in the pulled in position because let me move these as you can see this is the armature right here that I'm moving with my uh, finger and you can see the contacts there on the left watch the contacts move watch that they make connection right there before the armature is pulled in against the core of the coil okay that's very important that that gap be there now this spring is going to produce the over travel on this end because when I remove this from here these contacts are all that keeps this from flipping up like that but going the other way you want the contacts to make before this bottoms out. That's the over travel that you want to see on a relay like this. So you know that the contacts are tight against the other contacts. Okay, these these are the normally closed contacts. These are the normally open contacts. This is the these are the commons right here. So once again, I know the camera is having trouble focusing on this, but we're going to move this. You see that there's still a gap there? That's very important. Let me flip this over. And I had to watch make sure all three contacts are making before all right and there's the over travel taken up that's that would be with the relay energized and the um, armature pulled in against the core so very important if you do any work on one of these to make sure that that adjustment is correct you don't want this to bottom out at the same time that the contacts touch because that means they won't be tight that's very bad. That's not very good for the life of the coil, uh, I mean of the contacts or the relay, uh, because you'll have no over travel. The, the um, contacts won't be tight, and that will lead to rapid contact wear. TAC was very generous with this, with this wiring, leaving it all long enough that you could pull these um, boards out where you can get at them. Because I pulled this board out and I tacked it up right there so I could do the desoldering and here's here's where that relay was soldered in 
This is the relay that does the motors, the real motors. This is the relay that does the heads. And actually, this relay doesn't do the heads. This relay talks to the uh, amplifier electronics so that it will do the heads. The amplifier has its own relay uh, for switching the forward and play, uh, reverse play heads. And then this, this is the one that does the capstan motor. And so at this point, what I want to do is, because I've got this flying lead I made here, uh, I want to make sure that this is going to go on there okay, get it in place, and get it ready to solder into position. Okay, well, it's all soldered back on now. I can clip this off. I see just a little spot right there that needs to be touched up. Perfect. At this point, I don't need the soldering iron anymore, so I'm going to unplug it also. Clip that off. I clipped it just a little long. That should be good. Okay. I don't want it to be any longer than any of the other uh, leads are. With this done, we can remount the board now in its proper location. And if you're working on one of these, I need to point out that these boards have got these rubber grommets and that they are important. Um, because there are standoffs that hold the board on. These standoffs here are where the screws that mount the board um, attach. And you don't want some of these traces here near the screw holes coming in contact with the chassis. So it's very important that those are intact. So please keep that in mind. Okay. Get the soldering iron out of the way so I don't bump it with my elbow and burn myself. Make sure this is still okay looking. It is. We're all good. Put this back in there and... Some of these screws I don't think are very magnetic. Usually magnetized tools on a tape deck are a bad idea.
Okay, so I've got the back panel put back on, the circuit board with the relay that I rebuilt put back in place, and what's the last step now to do is, before putting everything back together back in the cabinet and putting the front panel back on, is to test this out and make sure that it's going to work correctly. And I've already done a little check here, make sure everything looks good in there. And uh, put my plug on. And uh, plug this back in. And hope that I don't let any of the magic smoke out. Okay. Alright, so I've raised the tape tension arm here, and I'm going to press the forward play button, and as you can see the capstan motor is going forwards, which is anti-clockwise. I'm going to hit the reverse, and as you can see it went backwards. I hit the stop button there. Okay. Now, if you're not familiar with some of these older decks like this one, this is kind of the way they operate here. The when you raise the uh, tape tension arm, they um, they don't just start running. They um, you gotta wait till you press a button. And I'm gonna go in reverse play now. And as you can see, it's moving clockwise. So reverse play is happening. Hit stop. Go in the forward play. Hit stop. Go in the reverse play. That's good. Go in the forward play. You can see it was reversing. Go in the reverse play. You can see it reversing. All right. So it's pretty good. Let me set this thing right side up now. I'll go on a little tour of things that you should check out if you've got one of these decks. If you have one of these old TAC decks, you should know that even when you turn the power off, and the power is out, now off, that the filter capacitor in the power supply for the transport mechanism um, will hold a charge for quite a while. And so if I raise this lever and press play, you see I just discharged the capacitor. You're going to want to do that before you start doing any work on one of these unless you uh, want to get about a hundred volt shock off of that capacitor discharging. Uh, let's start here and you should know about a little magnet right here that's attached to this. I swing this out of the way. You can just see it but there is a little magnet glued on right there and over time that glue breaks down and you'll find this magnet stuck to this piece of metal right here on this arm so you'll want to glue it back into place the other thing to know about is the pinch roller lever which is right here this tends to gum up the grease dries out and it, and it gums up. There's a lot of people who have different ways of doing this. I don't like using heat on these die cast parts so I use kerosene and um, I'll lubricate this with kerosene, these pivot points, until it's um, free enough and then I'll pull this all apart and clean it. I don't ever mess with any of the adjusting screws on the heads. Um, these were adjusted at the factory and unless you see evidence that somebody has tinkered with these adjustments don't. Um, belt you'll obviously need to replace the belt uh, oftentimes on these although sometimes you'll get lucky and you'll have a good belt such as this guy here had a good belt on it when I bought it they had other problems though that were pretty minor. Um, the Suzuki bomb caps that's these little dudes here. 
all these orange caps are, um, and there's four under the front plate, and then three, there's three of the Suzuki caps right here underneath this on this model, and there's one on the power supply, so I believe there's eight total, and then, um, It'll leave it to your decision on what you want to do with other capacitors, whether you think they should be changed out or not. Um, this deck really works pretty well with the caps that are in it, other than other than these, which give a problem. You always need to raise this uh, tape tension arm. in order to test the deck and it's a good idea to test it in um, this is the fast button when I put this all back together it'll be more evident when you want to go to fast forward or fast rewind press the fast button first then go in the direction that you want to go As you can see, that relay that we put in is working just fine because this is going forwards and uh, backwards just like it's supposed to. So I think it's time to put the front panel back on this and put it back in the cabinet and listen to some music. So I'll see you when that's done. Just a quick look at the back side of the player now that I've got it back in the cabinet to show you what I was uh, faced with back in the mid-90s and not having any documentation on these at all. Um, this deck was connected by some cords to a uh, separate playback and record amplifier. Actually, just a record amplifier. There's playback preamps built into this. These are line outs right here that can go directly into your um, stereo system. But in order to record with this, you need the two connecting cables to go between this and the amplifier to um, do any kind of recording. But the way this thing looks with the back cover off always reminded me of the old um, radios. And uh, with the big chassis and these caps sticking up like, like tubes. Uh, so I always thought that was kind of neat. These are the uh, real motors. These are a outer rotor induction motor, which is kind of unusual. They're an inside-out version of the standard motor and this of course is the capstan motor and it's a synchronous motor it's a two-speed synchronous motor and it's got this cooling fan on the back here to help keep it cool help keep the air moving and then the power transformer these are the uh, filter caps for the power supply for the uh, one is for the um, 100 volt power supply that powers the the transport controls the solenoids and relays and the other cap, I think, is a smaller cap for the 30-volt uh, power supply that powers the amplifier. And then these large wire-round resistors up here are for the um, spooling motors, the real motors. These are six-pole induction motors. And um, when con connected directly across the 100-volt line, these all run on 100 volts. All these motors are wound for 100 volts, so... Um, this transformer steps down the 120 to 100 volts to power these. When these are connected directly across the 100 volt line at 60 cycles, they'll try to run around 1100 RPM or so. With because the, they're um, they're a six pole motor uh, induction motor, so they're never going to run at synchronous speed, which would be 1200 RPM. They'll run a little bit slower. And um, they'll produce a, a reasonable amount of, of torque. I want to say these are probably a tenth of a horsepower, or probably a little less. Not not massive. Uh, but when you're playing a tape, you, you don't want that kind of torque. And so you have these resistors here that go in series with each of the motors to slow them down and uh, reduce the, the torque on them. 
and because they're split capacitor motors they'll they'll run pretty slow and still still turn they don't have to come up to a, a running speed if they weren't split capacitor motors they wouldn't uh, you wouldn't be able to do this well there's one step to be done before we play a tape and that's to demagnetize the heads what I'm going to do is to demagnetize all of the steel parts in the tape path. I'm going to demagnetize the four heads, the erase head, the record, the uh, reverse play, the forward, uh, the uh, record head, and the forward play. This uh, demagnetizer's got a rubber, a rubber tip on the end, so it you know it won't. I'm not going to actually touch the heads though. Also going to demagnetize these guide posts and the cap span. And so I start with the demagnetizer unplugged. And I'm going to plug it in a small distance away from the from the deck. And I'm going to come at demagnetize now I'm going to do the uh, forward play head Cord head the reverse play head shouldn't have to demagnetize the erase head but I'm going to demagnetize the erase head and I'm going to demagnetize all these guide posts Tape lifter, center guide post, another tape lifter, another guide post, and the capstan. And make sure the capstan is well demagnetized. And finally, this guide over here. Make sure it's demagnetized. All right, now with the demagnetizer away, I can unplug it. All right, we're ready to play a tape now. So what I'm gonna do is stop this machine and I'll take this tape off and put it on over here. And we'll listen to it on this machine. Bet you think you're, I'm forgetting something, huh? Okay. Turn the power on. And hit play. And hit stop and switch to three and three quarter inches per second speed. Now you don't get that same snappy startup with this machine that you do some of the uh, others because, let me hit stop again, the capstan motor is not always running as long as the tape arm is lifted. On the reel-to-reel -reel deck that's sitting behind this one, the newer one, the, uh, the A4300SX, 
as long as the tape arm is lifted, the capstan motor is always running. So when you press play, you get an instant, you know, um, playback with no wow. This deck, on the other hand, it's not turning uh, unless you hit um, forward play or reverse play. So you get this sort of ramp up of speed, and you're going to hear that here in a moment. But um, let me switch this off, and I'll um, I'll hook the uh, audio from the deck up to the camera, and you can hear this thing play back directly. <laughs> to play some more of that tape. There's some pretty enjoyable music on that. This is, um, I don't know where these tapes come from. A friend of mine gave them to me. I've got a whole bunch of them. They are, um, some kind of an American Airlines tape. I don't know if they, um, 
if they uh, played these on the airplanes or at the airport in the waiting room or what. Um, oops, I just bumped the camera with that. But they're recorded on a Ampex tape stock and so far none of them that I've played have squealed and uh, some of them are recorded very good, some of them are very badly been recorded, obviously they did not erase I, I get a little bit of audio sometimes at seven and a half, especially on side two, so I might go through these and um, uh, record some of these and um, uh, erase over them after I've taken the stuff that's worth saving off, but uh, nice to see I got my old deck running again, and uh, I'm very happy about that, and uh, It's good to see it playing and 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 uh, running so well. So anyway, this is Oklahoma Bridges, and uh, as always, thank you for watching. See you next time. Oh, a little P.S. here before I go. I wanted to show you the remote control for this unit. I um, this did not come with the deck when I bought it twenty something years ago, but uh, this is what it looks like. And it has a octal tube plug style plug on the other end. And to use it, we'll uh, turn the deck around here and pull this dummy plug out. And then plug in the remote. And of course I've got it tangled on every wire in this room. It has a keyway. It'll only let you plug it in one way. Always hang on to those. Now, with the remote, turn the power back on here, I can operate the deck without being anywhere near it. Now, as you can see, what it allows you to do is not very much. Uh, you, it allows you to um, reverse play, forward play, and stop it, but um, it's... For listening, it's nice. You can sit across the room in your easy chair and uh, have the hi-fi system on and have it going. Just wanted to show you that. That's a very cool accessory to have. Alright, I'm going to play some music for the outro and hope you enjoyed this video. Bye. I'll be looking at the moon but I'll be seeing you I'll be seeing you you're everything to fame if you win it comes and goes in a minute where's the real stuff in life to cling to love is the answer. Someone to love is the answer. Once you found her, built your world around her, make someone happy. Make just one someone happy. We'll be happy too.